Okay, the next common question we have are the different types of beams that we have in 5G. Now, we just uh, discussed about the SSB beams in the last session and we uh, talked about what are the SSB beams and uh, what are their functionality and what is beam sweeping. So, uh, the SSB beams themselves are like the broadcast beams. So, they are the beams that carry the common channel that carry the broadcast channel. So the broadcast channels are the synchronization signals, the PBCH, which is the MIB signal, even the CSIRS, uh, they are also mostly carried on the um, broadcast beams. And uh, what else? Uh, so the, before the UE has uh, given any PMI feedback, before the UE has given any CSI feedback, uh, the G node B uses the broadcast beam the SSB beam to even uh, gen, uh, transfer all the traffic. So these beams are a sort of uh, the uh, default beams and uh, they are the ones which can be used for um, for all sort of uh, information but mostly they are the broadcast beams. Now once the UE has uh, read the CSI RS and it will generate a CSI feedback and I, as I explained in the Massive MIMO video, the CSI feedback carries the PMI which is the pre-coding matrix indicator. Now, once the UE sends the PMI to the G node B, the G node B will use the PMI to generate a new beam weight, a new beam for the, U, for the UE itself, which will be more narrower, more focused, and it will have um, a better quality for the UE. So if you look at this beam, for instance, you can see that it is more narrower, it is more focused compared to the corresponding SSB beam. So the UE will now get a better quality beam for the traffic, which will mean that it can actually achieve better throughput results. Now the problem with the PMI is that PMI is a limited number of, uh, of uh, entities. Like you, for instance, you have four SSB beams here, right? So the whole cell is divided in four beams and you might have 16 PMI values for the horizontal axis. So with the PMI, you can divide the cell with 16 beams. So 16 beams compared to four beams, definitely they will be more narrower they will uh, be more focused and they will have a better uh, link budget, better signal quality. However, they are still a finite number of sets and a finite number of beams, right? They are still finite. So uh, a UE, if it is over here, it will still get the same same beam, the same PMI beam. If the UE is over here, it will still get the same PMI beam, even though it is not in the center of this PMI beam but still the PMI value will still remain the same and the beam that is the best fit for this for the UE over here or the UE over here will still be uh, this beam. A UE over here might get a different PMI beam, right? But uh, in it within this vicinity, the PMI beam might not change. So this is where uh, the concept of the SRS beams come. So what is SRS? SRS refers to sounding reference signals. Now, uh, because in most of the massive MIMO systems, they are TDD. In TDD means that uplink and downlink are using the same frequency. So when the frequency is same, then the uplink channel can be used to estimate the downlink channel um, conditions, right? So if a UE sends sounding reference signals in uplink, the G node B uses the SRS to estimate the most optimum beam for the UE. Now, um, why this is better than the PMI based beam? Two, two main scenarios. First, the PMI, as I said, is a limited number, right? You have to choose from a, a limited number. But the, for SRS, there is no limitation because the G node B has to use the SRS to generate a most, uh, the most optimal beam weights. It can have infinite number theoretically. So it can actually be, be uh, focused anywhere it wants, right? there is no limitation from the from the SRS perspective. Secondly, um, the SRS estimation is from the G node B side. And on the G node B side, the computational power, the processing power is much, much higher compared to the UE side. The G node B can compute the most optimum beam using the SRS beam weights. And that uh, might be a more narrower beam in comparison to what we get with the PMI beam. Uh, now, what are the downside? Since SRS is sent in uplink and it is sent throughout the whole bandwidth, so they are they need a lot of uplink power. 
So if a UE is in bad radio conditions such that the uplink power is limited, then SRS beam might not be the most convenient one or might not be the most practical one because the UE may not be able to send the SRS over the whole bandwidth um, very easily because the power is divided over the whole bandwidth and the UE will not have enough power in poor radio conditions. So in poor radio conditions, the PMI beams might be better. In cell center or good radio conditions, the SRS beams might be better. And both PMI based beams and SRS based beams, they are basically type of traffic beams. They carry the traffic, while the SSB beams are the broadcast beams, which are used for coverage and mobility strategies and mobility decisions. So that is the uh, summary of different type of beams and their pros and cons. I hope it's uh, clear now. See you soon.